This isn't my first program. I, uh, the first program I went to when I was 13 was a wilderness program. It was 15 months long. And uh, upon leaving that program, I went back out, did the same things. Uh, got in some trouble with the law. Uh, so had acquired some theft charges, some, some other stuff like that, and uh, got into drugs. I uh, went to some rehabs, went to some outpatient rehabs, uh, went, to all the, went to so many programs and uh, nothing was working. Well, it wasn't, this isn't the first place I've been. So um, I was used to having like a structure, but not like this. Like when I first got here, I thought it was gonna be like a normal boarding school and I would still be able to do like all the same stuff. When I walked through these doors, I was scared. You know, I was angry at my parents for sending me here. I thought they were overreacting and that they were just once again trying to control my life because they didn't think I was doing a very good job. I mean, I wasn't, but I didn't think that at the time, or at least I didn't want them to think that. When you first get here, um, you feel as though you're a failure, basically. You feel as though everything in your life has fallen apart. So for me, the first day was one of extreme bewilderment and an ultimate realization that I was in for a new kind of life. And so I, I've wanted to learn how to read ever since I was small. Like, it's been my New Year's resolution since I could remember. And since I've actually had the opportunity to learn how to read, I took advantage of that and things just started to pick up. I, it only took me six months to get to a seventh grade level and when I came here I was at first and second. Since I've been here I've been on high honors. All, every single semester, every single quarter I've, I've received high honors here and um, that's very, like it was very flip-flop because before I came here I had straight up. Before I came to Alon I didn't go to school. Um, I might go to school like once a week or once every couple weeks. Um, and when I came into Alon I didn't have any credits at all. And now I have um, enough to graduate in March. Um, so I've done a lot of school here, <laughs> a lot of work. One of the big things you have in Alon that you don't have at other schools of this type is that this demand, expectation that students perform. They have to carry their own end of the law. They have to do what's expected of them. And when they don't, they're helped and, and uh, given advice and counseling to, to get on back on track. When they do, they experience the rewards of growth and promotion. So it's really, um, it's really quite a unique program. I think having been in existence for 30 years speaks to that in particular. So many of our kids are going to colleges and they're getting into great schools and they're just really making their mark in the world. And to see them when they first come into my office empty and full of pain and to leave here with so much potential and the skills to be able to realize that potential is one of the best things about our program. It takes a special teacher to teach a special student. And that's what they are, special teachers. Uh, it's not just about the work, they, I mean, they care, you know? When you see the teachers around campus, it's not, how's your English homework doing, it's, how's your life? The staff here are some of the most amazing people I've ever met. I didn't think people like this existed anywhere. I can't imagine working anywhere else. Um, it is not an easy job to do. It is not always, you know, it's not one of those jobs that every day you go home feeling great about yourself. But days like today, watching somebody go from point A to point Z is one of the most beautiful things. And being a part of it is why me and why I and all my colleagues work here. Wow, if these, if these people are doing this for kids and like they must really want to change them and it makes you like have that motivation to change. They, they don't just change a little, they change a lot. And I, I, I often didn't see that in other places that I'd worked. This is what I need, this is what I've been looking for. Because I didn't believe I had any hope in my life. That's why, that's why people try suicide. They, they just they believe in their hearts that nothing can help them. And that they aren't even, maybe they don't believe they're worth changing. I mean, they don't believe they're capable of changing. I was the kind of guy I didn't believe I was capable of it. Um, and came, coming here, I just saw some hope. Didn't know what exactly. I just saw a new way of life that made me feel like I was worth something. I just, I just feel people more in my heart. Like, I care more. Before, in the past, it was like, ah, whatever, then forget it. You don't want to be my friend, forget it. I'll move on. You know, now it's like, I really care. I'm going to push. I'm going to strive for that goal. It's like, I got enough passion. Just, like, stay focused. I'll teach your son and daughter self-control, like loyalty honesty, integrity, things that you need to succeed in life, things that a lot of people didn't have, that I, I didn't have, I'm still working on, and that, like, it's hard, but there's a lot of people here to help you through it. Two years is a long time, but in the grand scheme of your life, the way I feel about myself right now in this moment, the past 26 months, 
every single second of it was worth it. I'm so happy for him that I think he has gotten his life back uh, because before he came here, I think it was an inevitable thing that either Ross would be dead or in jail. Um, so my feelings today uh, are just so happy for him that he's going to have the rest of his life. We have our son back. I don't think I know. I know Alon has saved my life. Alon has saved my life along with hundreds of others' lives, and uh, I love him for it. I wouldn't take back a day. Um, I wouldn't take back a day of acting out either, uh, because all the acting out, all the, uh, the raucous behavior contributed to the greater whole that I am now. So many things to understand. So many willing to give a damn. I know somehow we can learn to stand side by side. Someone said, tap into my energy. What a wonderful word to feel and see and be the source of electricity side by side. Side by side, let's walk with each other. Side by side, let's talk to one another. Spend a moment in time side by side. Things won't change till we get down to it. Reach out your hand. The admission process can go quickly if parents choose it to. Um, sometimes parents are using Elon as a backup to something else that they hope works, and it may or it may not, um, but we frequently end up hearing from those parents again because the other programs and um, some of the other choices that the parents had made while they were hoping and being optimistic wasn't quite enough for that particular kid. Um, the right kind of kid would is someone who, who is uh, of average uh, or more intelligent. Some of our kids are very bright. Um, who is uh, who can make cause and effect connections? Who uh, who may be on medication, but but pr probably does not truly need it. Uh, we we determine that on a, on a case by case basis, on an individual basis. But it's essentially someone who who has been making bad choices, who may have been involved in the psychiatric system, but doesn't seem, uh, doesn't seem really uh, severely disturbed. Although some of our kids have that, <laughs> some of our kids do have that label attached to them. You know, when kids come into my office for admission and I'm processing their paperwork, I look at them and their eyes are so empty and so blank they are so out of touch with who they are and what they are capable of accomplishing. When I go to graduations and I see students and I usually try to chat with them for a few minutes before we go through their actual ceremony, they, their eyes are there, that brightness is there, they're back, you know, they're, they're just, there's a real person in there who has a lot to offer. And Elon does things uh, a little differently, uh, more of an emphasis on integrity, honesty, accountability, uh, wellness kind of a model rather than a, a psychiatric or illness model. There's a lot of cognitive and behavioral in interventions, but, but it's not a psychiatric or medical model. There's no, there are no psychotropic drugs used. And, uh, and the kids often don't know they're being therapized, if I can use that word. Usually we're working with changing character and ch uh, with our students and and the components that have gone into that uh, often negative character, dishonesty or uh, a lack of integrity, 
uh, or lack of confidence have taken many years to build up. And uh, we're not just changing individual behaviors and particular behaviors, we're trying to change a student's basic path, basic, very often basic ways of thinking. Uh, kids throughout the course of their stay will learn how to give directions and how to take directions, how to deal with success, how to deal with failure. Uh, they have responsibilities that are real responsibilities and the life skills is, uh, is uh, crucial to the development of these kids. Uh, they have not been able to perform in a way that is accepted by society and on a daily basis throughout, th throughout the structured day these skills are taught. We are in a structured environment and this teaches them to prioritize their time. It teaches them to have things that are, that are very organized, you know, very tight. And it just, you know, to live in an environment where they're comfortable, but yet, you know, that there's actually discipline. And it helps because, you know, the management skills, definitely the management skills, where these kids, you know, may not know, like, how to have things organized, don't know how, how to keep, like, anything on time, how to do something. You know, and it just, when you're pushing somebody, it's not like you're being a slave driver, but it's like you're a mentor for them. You're there right beside them all the way. Um, when you see a new resident walk in the door who is very similar um, situation to when you first came in um, and also has been struggling with the same things, you kind of remember where you came from. And it makes you also appreciate everything you've went through. It um, makes you appreciate what you've learned and what you've accomplished. And you remember um, where you were. You remember how you don't want to go back to that. Um, but also you have this care and concern. Like, it's like a feeling that you can't really describe, but the best way to put it into words is you see this person and you just remember that and you just want to help them because you know that they can be helped. You know that there's hope and you see that hope for someone. I do have a lot of hope for my future now. Um, I really think that like I'm going to get my education. And Alon gives you the opportunity to really you know, tap into these things and like to tap into your courage and to actually do things you didn't see possible before um, because you're also given examples. Um, when you have people who can guide you who have been through the exact same thing, whether it be a staff um, or a director who's been through the program or whether it be someone who's a peer and has, you know, the same kind of issues and same kind of feelings as you, when you see them going through it um, and they're teaching you and they're there for you, then that gives you the strength too because you can see yourself doing it. And it requires a, 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 a relentless effort on, on, on the part of the, the, the staff um, and the directors of their houses to stay on top of them and consistently follow up and follow through and make sure that the, that the decisions that are being made are correct and make sure that the accountability remains consistent and that kids are continually given feedback and that we don't give up and that we don't accept failure as a solution, that failure is simply a part of the learning process, and that everybody must learn to fail in order to learn to succeed. Kids these days, a lot of times, are able to have expectations placed on them, but when they fail their expectations, they escape or they quit. And one of the great things that I've seen from in, in the program from being here many years is that uh, students can't escape here, and that it's as though there's a big mirror and that everyone has to look at the truth about themselves and that by grasping the truth and, and creating a deeper understanding they then are able to look at where they are and where they want to be. I guess that's what got me through everything is just knowing that no matter what I just wasn't going to give up um, no matter how hard things got. You find self-respect within yourself knowing that you're actually you know what I feel good for the first time this is people are listening to me you know I'm not the one now doing whatever I want to do and um, I'm with the negativity of other people but everybody's trying to work for something positive you know and I'm inputting my you know pretty much my leadership and you know they're following. Well, they come to Elon basically because there is no other environment in which they can be effectively educated to come close to reaching their potential. The Elon program puts them in a position to deal with the issues, to deal with the problems within the social structure of the life skills program, which demands from them maximum effort in whatever it is that they do.
What keeps you going, I guess, is the strength that you have inside of you. And I believe everyone has a strength inside of them to do it. Um, just sometimes you just have to tap into it. I think everyone's got like this amazing like amount of courage inside of them and this like amazing desire to be better people. Um, because a lot of time you have that point of reference where you were a good person before and you just kind of like went off track. That's how I look at it. Like you kind of just took the wrong path. And I think Alon kind of brings you back um, on track and it brings you back on the path that you were headed in in the first place. Being alone for a while, I think what I realized was at one point I had to figure something out because whether or not I wanted to be in therapy, whether or not I wanted to be in a placement, I had to figure out what I was about because that's all you can do in Elan. You're put in that position constantly. There's just so much you can actually learn from groups about yourself, people around you, maybe about you know what the topic is going to be on. Um, there's also an image group that I've been in like, you know, what is your image? What is your identity? You know, what do you want to be perceived as by people? And did you use your encounter groups quite a bit? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I was a huge venter in the house. I mean, I go into encounter groups. I get my feelings off of coordinators, you know, the higher strength, uh, people who had been there for a long time. I get my feelings off for everyone. I had anger and, and resentment for everybody in the group. Um, Including their group leader. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at times, yes, that is true. Uh, although I regret most of those times. Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, I think for me, you know, the encounter group was an excellent tool. I mean, if I didn't have special groups, if I didn't encounter groups, I don't know what I would have done. At the same time that, that we work with the students, it's, it's critical and imperative that we work with the families as well. Um, I screwed up relationships with older students. I screwed up relationships with people who are my age. Um, and one of the great things about Alana is there's always more positive people than negative people in the house. It's just always the way it's built. So when you screw up a relationship and it's your fault and you see the person in front of the house and you see the person you know, going to work, doing all these extracurricular things, you really feel bad right. and you cannot help but evaluate what had happened. By seeing how I screwed up relationships in the house, I saw how I screwed up the relationship with my family. With all this anger, whether I liked my parents or not was not the issue. I, I was the problem now, um, and I was causing problems in my environment, and I just needed to address that somehow. So, The students begin to, to understand and, and recognize that their parents' love in and of itself is unconditional, but that their parents' respect and their parents' trust is something that it, they must earn. A lot of kids will tell me, how do you stay so happy or upbeat all the time? And I was saying, because I know that within my future, it holds a lot more for me than it did before. You know what? Your future can be better for you. You just need to open your mind. You need to open your heart, open up yourself, you know, to let it work for you. The alarm program, both the residential component and the academic component, works really well for kids that come in with any kind of specific learning disability. Most of the students who enter a line come in here with a credit deficit. Um, even though they may tell you they're a junior, that means that they've sat in the school or at least were enrolled in the school for three years. Uh, they may only have two or three credits to their name. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to help them catch up, uh, make up for some of that lost time, uh, so that when they finish this program, hopefully they can go on to college. Uh, school is like a, a job um, in the house program. They come to school and they have things that have to get done every single day and at the end of the week uh, they take a look at the job. And, and I think by turning grades in every week and posting them in the house the kids can see their upward progress and then that's even more incentive for them to continue to do well. The school in the evening is a big thing for us. The kids really enjoy school at night. Um, it's, it's such a uh, natural progression for their day because they work on their feelings all day long. They work through their issues all day long. When, they, when school rolls around, they can really focus on the academic piece. Kids enjoy coming to school and look forward to coming to school here at Elan because of uh, what we ask kids to do. We ask kids to think in school. We ask kids to come and, and, and to use their intellect. All day long they deal with feelings, as you well know. In the house program they deal with feelings from the time they get up in the morning until they finish dinner. Um, dealing with feelings is very hard. Uh, it's not something they like doing, but it's something they truly need to do. When they come to school, we ask them to think. We don't ask them to feel. They know they can come and they can spend four and a half hours thinking.
One of the things that parents worry about when kids start applying to college and start writing their college essays is, well, how do we talk about our student being at Elan? How do we uh, kind of broach the subject that our student went to a school that uh, uh, wasn't, uh, well, it was kind of uh, kids who had problems? And I say to them, look, have the student write about their experiences. Have the student write about what they were through before they came to Elan, what they went through while they were at Elan, and what their hopes and dreams are for the future. I find that college admissions offices love our kids, just for the reason you spoke about a minute ago. These kids have been through it. These kids have done all that stuff. They don't need to do it again. When our kids go on to college, they're serious. They're going to college because they want an education. They aren't going to college to party. I graduated high school a year earlier. I'm only 17. I'm going off to college uh, next week. Uh, for the first year I, I leave Elan, I'm going to be going to a community college, get myself situated, take some classes, and then uh, about a year later I'm going to transfer to uh, the university of my choice. I'm not sure yet, yet where I want to go, uh, but eventually I want to be a lawyer. Um, I most definitely want to go to college. I don't think I would have said that before I came here. I was a high school dropout. Um, I, I thought I was going to get my GED and like go to community college or something, and, um, but I definitely want to go to college. I want to major in criminology. It's interesting to watch the changes they go through uh, academically here. They come in here not liking school. School was only a place for them to go to socialize. School was a place to go and meet their friends. Um, classes were not important. Grades were not important. Um, they had no idea of going on to school, uh, thought that school was a dead end. They leave a line, they're looking forward to more education, they're looking forward to entering college, they're looking forward to a number of opportunities and options in life. Right. When they come here, they have no opportunity, they have no option. They leave here with a wide variety of options on their plate. Um, it is absolutely amazing to me every day. I come to work every day and I'm amazed by what happens to the kids here. Um, it's truly a phenomenal experience. Yeah.